It is the universe's greatest secret, the invisible web holding all of creation together. For nearly a century, we have sought its signature in a way, and now from the heart of our own galaxy, science believes it has finally caught a glimpse. A silent force fills the universe. We cannot see it. We cannot touch it. The search for dark matter has been one of science's greatest hunts, a cosmic detective story stretching across decades. We only know dark matter exists because of its crushing gravitational pull, forcing stars to spin faster than they should, acting as the invisible glue that stops galaxies from tearing themselves apart. The universe is expanding. That means the distance between any two particles in the universe will be increasing. So that is expanding. And what has been found uh, 27 years ago is this expansion is accelerating. So the distance will be ever, ever, will be ever increasing. And that has been in the standard model during the last 27 years. And so what caused this expansion? And so probably the imaginary dark energy is pushing uh, the old, older uh, you know, galaxies and the particles in the universe. But we still do not know the nature of dark energy. And now, a Japanese astrophysicist believes to have finally found the first direct clue, a strange burst of gamma rays, light from the darkest corners of the universe, possibly created by dark matter itself. The findings, published in the Journal of Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics, offer insights into the wild hunt for dark matter. Dark matter is universe's biggest mystery. It makes up 85% of all matter yet. It is invisible. It does not shine. It does not burn. It slips through planets, stars, and us like a ghost. And still, it holds galaxies together, shaping the cosmic web. Without it, the Milky Way would fly apart like sparks from a broken wheel. For decades, scientists have built million-dollar detectors deep underground, chasing a particle they cannot see. Telescopes scan the sky, searching for a signal that refuses to appear. Now in the new research, Detailed analysis of the gamma ray signature shows a pattern. No ordinary astrophysical object can explain. The energy spike is sharp, clean, unusual. Exactly what theories predicted if dark matter particles smashed into each other at high speed. It is not proof not yet, but it is the strongest hint humanity has ever had. A door has opened. For the first time, the dark may be speaking back. Bureau report. We on World is One. This Sunday, Switzerland will be voting on replacing men's current military service requirement with a compulsory civic duty for all. As part of Switzerland's direct democratic system, voters will also be weighing in on whether to slap new taxes on the super rich or help finance the country's efforts against climate change. Neither initiative is expected to pass, according to recent polls, but they have generated significant discussion in the wealthy nation. In fact, the Swiss government and parliament have urged voters to reject the two items, charging they would entail huge costs and could also threaten the economy. The so-called civic duty initiative initially garnered quite a broad backing, but its support has crumbled in recent weeks reportedly, with the latest survey showing 64% of those polled were opposed, and the committee behind the initiative maintaining that requiring every Swiss citizen, regardless of gender, to carry out national service in the army or in a civilian capacity would only strengthen the social cohesion. Today, able-bodied men in Switzerland must serve in the military or complete civilian service. 
Women volunteer if they choose. The proposal on Sunday would replace this with a gender neutral system that basically assigns every citizen a role, military, civil protection or social service. Supporters arguing this is not only fairer but also necessary. Switzerland's volunteer numbers have been falling and the military faces personnel shortages. They say women already contribute massively to unpaid labor, child care, elder care, community work, and that formalizing civic duty could make the country stronger, more cohesive, and better prepared for crises. They say equality cuts both ways. If men must serve, women should too. Shared responsibility strengthens society, quote unquote. But critics are warning that the proposal adds more burden to women who already carry out the majority of domestic and care work. And then there's the price tag, of course. The Swiss government estimating a universal system could nearly double costs, overextend civil defense networks, and disrupt the labor, mar the labor market. Beyond the gender debate, the vote is also a test of how far Switzerland is willing to actually go in recalibrating national security. With conflicts in Europe squeezing military resources, some Swiss leaders are warning that weakening or reorganizing conscription at this moment could be risky. On the same day, voters also decide on another explosive proposal, an inheritance tax targeting the ultra-rich. What's the plan? A 50% tax on inheritances above 50 million Swiss francs with proceeds earmarked for climate action. Backers are saying Europe's wealth gap is widening and the richest households must fund climate adaptation. Opponents say the tax would drive wealth and capital out of Switzerland. Business groups are warning it risks destabilizing the country's carefully balanced economy known for attracting global investment. Polls ahead of the vote showing both measures facing strong resistance. But uh, the debate itself has exposed deep divides over gender roles, over national security, over social fairness, and over who should be footing the bill for climate responsibility in a wealthy aging nation. Whichever way the vote actually goes, Switzerland's decision will be making its impact felt far beyond the country. Is compulsory civic duty for all the future of equality is the big question. New Delhi and Moscow are reportedly firming up negotiations to add five more S-400 Triumph air defense systems, a move that would basically double India's current fleet and raise the total number of such systems to 10. If cleared, this will mark one of India's most significant military acquisitions in recent years. According to reports, India and Russia are currently discussing the framework of the deal. It is still unclear whether the additional systems will be built in India under the Make in India program or purchased directly, like the first batch, bought in 2018 for nearly 5 billion US dollars. Two of those original five systems, in fact, are still awaiting delivery. The urgency for these additional systems reportedly stemming from their battlefield performance. During Operation Sindur, the S-400 played a decisive role by stopping Pakistani fighter jets, including advanced J-10 aircraft from crossing into Indian airspace. The S-400 reportedly recorded one of the longest range kills in combat history, hitting an enemy aircraft nearly 315 kilometers away. Its rapid shoot and relocate capability also proved to be essential in avoiding counter-strikes. Air Chief Marshal recently called the S-400 the game changer of Operation Sindur, stating that the system shot down at least five high technology fighters belonging to Pakistan, including jets in the F-16 and the JF-17 class. India reportedly wants the remaining two S-400 regiments delivered at the earliest and is exploring the purchase of five additional systems. These discussions are expected to feature prominently when the Russian president meets the Indian Prime Minister 
Speculation over whether India will acquire Russia's Su-57 fighter jet continues. And according to reports, India is exploring options but has taken no decision yet. And no announcement is expected during Putin's visit, reportedly. Also, reportedly, no firm negotiations underway at this stage. However, the Su-57 remains on the radar because of its long-range weapon-carrying ability, the jet's payload capacity and endurance, making it suitable for strategic strike missions. Of particular interest here is the air-to-air -air missile, which can hit targets more than 300 kilometers away. India is also considering integrating this missile with upgraded Su-30 MKI fighters. Su-30 MKI fighters. In fact, India and Russia are also reportedly simultaneously working on the Su-30 MKI modernization program. Technical discussions are reportedly ongoing and modalities are being finalized. According to a Times of India report, India is poised to approve a 63,000 crore rupees upgrade package for the first batch of the of the first batch of 84 Su-30 MKI fighter jets equipping them with improved radars, avionics, long range weapons and multi sensor fusion. The upgrade aims to keep the aircraft combat ready for the next 3 decades. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.